Do you think there's only one way to satisfy a specification? I'm going to try to answer that question today. A quick disclaimer, there may be some details in this video that you don't agree with. That's okay, no big deal, but I hope that you can agree with the approach. My name is Tyler Lay and I make these videos to help you make better concrete. Is there only one way to meet a specification? Specifications often give a single approach for satisfactory performance. They say, you shall provide this. You shall meet this criteria. Does it make sense to only have one way to do something? Let's give an example. Let's say I want a concrete with a certain water cement ratio a certain RCP value, and a certain cover. But when they go to build that structure, some things are off. My RCP value may be a little bit high. That means I'm worried about the permeability of my concrete. My cover may be a little bit low. That means that the distance from the outside surface to my rebar isn't what I want. My structure may not last as long. But what do you do about this? Do you reduce the pay for the structure? Do you reduce the pay to, for the contractor? Does that make the structure last longer? Do you make them rip the structure out and put a new one in? Is there a better way to do this? Well, what do we really want? Well, we want equivalent performance. We asked for this and we didn't get it. We want some way to get us back to equivalent performance. So what if there were several equivalent designs so that a contractor would have a bunch of choices if something doesn't go as planned? As in, I want this, but guess what? You can give me this and this if I'm not quite right. A good analogy might be, I wanted my hamburger with pickles on it, but you didn't bring any pickles. So I'll take a milkshake instead. There's a Canadian parking structures document that does things just this way. Good job, Canada. Let's just say you wanted your cover to be two and a half inches. What if it's a little bit less? Well, this document says if your cover is about five millimeters less, it's all good. Accept the concrete, but you're gonna make them use a sealer on top of it. And if your cover is even lower, then you're gonna make them use a membrane on top of that concrete again to help keep those chemicals out. By defining what will happen if somebody doesn't meet the mark that you set, it reduces the risk to the contractor. Less risk equals a more accurate bid. Also, less risk equals a lower bid in the end, and everybody wins from that. For example, this document has a table where it says that these three choices are equivalent. I'd like a high quality concrete with a certain amount of cover, but guess what? In my parking structure, if my cover's a little bit lower, I can live with a sealer. If my concrete quality is a little bit low, then I'm gonna need a corrosion inhibitor inside that concrete. And they think all three of these are equal, but they didn't stop at three. They made a list of eight different choices of different combinations of cover and quality of concrete and all kinds of different technologies that you can modify the concrete with to bring it back up to equivalent performance. Now, how do they determine that these were all equivalent? Well, they use this program called Life365 to do it. I'm not so sure that every one of these things are truly equivalent, and I think that's okay. I think what's important is that we give people choices. So in summary, we need to give alternate solutions within our specifications. What if this goes wrong during construction? What will we accept? By defining these alternatives, we reduce risks to our contractors. We make it easier for them to give us an equivalent performance of what we want. Thanks everybody. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave me a comment below if you like this video. Take care, bye.